for 45 years in keeping Louisville weird, Electric Ladyland has been there for all your eccentricities. While they do offer the best smoking supplies out on the market today, there's a whole lot more to check out. From ashtrays and blacklight posters, to records, incense and burners, and items to stock your metaphysical supply. They're open from 10 to 10, seven days a week. Located at 2325 Bardstown Road in Louisville, Kentucky, and at electricladyland420.com. Roll out. Hey, metalheads, you like tattoos? Of course you do. If you're in the Louisville, Kentucky area, come on over the bridge to Clarksville, Indiana, and get you some ink done at Ageless Art. If ink isn't your thing, they have a piercing studio as well. Visit agelessartclarksville.com to see some frequently asked questions, meet the staff. The shop is open Monday through Thursday, 12 to 8 p.m., Saturdays, 12 to 10 p.m., and Sundays, 12 to 6 p.m., all appointment-only spots. You can set up your appointments by phone at 812-283-1793 or email agelessarttattooandpiercing at gmail.com and someone will get you set up for your first or your next tattoo or piercing. Hey, Metalheads, after going to a rager, what's your ultimate go-to? Mine is totally pizza. So when Overload is playing or I'm promoting the Metal Forge Live showcases or the big goddamn metal show, I go to Pizza Donisi. Pizza Donisi is gourmet artisan pizza from right here in Louisville, Kentucky. It features things like the pizza of the month, the sandwiches, and also vegetarian and vegan options, which is so totally fucking cool for all, all of it's It's awesome pizza. You definitely want to go. Hey, and also, from time to time, they do cannolis. Oh, so fucking good. You know what they said, man. Leave the gun, take the cannoli. Yeah, just like that in Godfather. They're located right next to the Mag Bar at 1396 South 2nd Street. So either stop in or call in at 502-213-0488. They're open till midnight. The witching hour. Heineken, fuck that shit. Pabst Blue Ribbon. Hey, Metalheads, you all hear me talk about Magbar all the time. It is the home to the Metal Forge Live showcases and is an integral stop in the Ultimate Underground Metal Tour schedule. They obviously feature live music, but the Magbar also has daily specials like Pint and Slice Night on Tuesdays with Pizza Donisi, but they also do Bring Your Own Vinyl on Thursdays with DJ Kent Jackson and Finer Things Sundays located right next to Pizza Donisi at 1398 South 2nd Street open 3pm to 4am 7 days a week get your asses out to the mag bar rock out in a broken wasteland Come to my fire And place your blood and steel Upon my fire
What's going on, Metalheads? Thank you all for tuning in to this week's episode of the Metal Forge. My name is Mark Jackson, and I am your host. Holy shit, what an awesome week it is. And right now, as you can see in the background, if you were watching the video version of this, you could see I'm driving to Chicago. Not really. Uh, yeah, because we're pre-recording this on like a Tuesday or Wednesday night. I can't remember my days anymore. It's a Tuesday. Uh, it was a Tuesday. It like any old day. I don't know. Hi, Jason. How are you? Uh, in the lyric, it was a Monday. I think so. I think okay. it is, but I don't know. Uh, I want to make sure. It's, my, it's, it, wasn't it, um, Sticks, is Foreigner? Okay. Sticks, Foreigner, Journey, somebody. That was, uh, it's either that, uh, yeah, where the, the, uh, one name, 70s, 80s bands like that. That, that's what that was. You know, Metallica. No. <laughs> <laughs> I need to know that. Go ahead. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you got to check that out. You got to consult the Google <laughs> machine. Dude, this yeah, week gonna, we we're have... Gonna live, we're going to live. We're going to find out live right now. Hell go yeah. Ahead. While you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and tell everybody, hey, and thank you for coming in today, by the way, Jason. Yeah, uh, no on my way to Chicago for Legions of Metal. Number six. Holy shit. Ice Hound, Devolution, Mourn the Light, Viper Witch. Fucking uh, Unleash the Archers, Tower Hill, Hyrax, fucking, oh my god, uh, Dawnbringer, fucking uh, Leather Duchess, so many cool fucking bands that are playing this show this weekend, uh, and I'm actually going up for Canadian Invasion tonight, and uh, of course tomorrow, fucking uh, the uh, uh, awesome fucking cool shit with Hyrax and Ice Howl and Mourn the Light and Viper Witch and fuck yeah! Isn't um isn't uh, Striker on playing that? Yeah, Striker is playing that. Yeah, not Striper. Yeah. Striker with Striker. K. Yeah. with a K. Yes. Yeah, uh, it was Foreigner, by the way. Okay, cool. I, yeah. I mean, I couldn't remember who it was because you know, uh, it always like reminds me like uh, Blue Collar Man, which is Sticks, mm-hmm. uh, which actually I like that song. I love the. Uh, da-dum, 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 da-dum. That, this is, make me an offer I can't refuse, you know? Yeah, we'll have to get into some 70s prog rock talk another time. But Yeah, I know, because this week we're going about as far away from 70s prog as you can. Because Phil Demmel from Violence, you know who that is, right? Vio hyphen Lentz, Violence, Eternal Nightmare, Machine Head. Uh, let's see who else fucking uh, he's played live for Slayer. He's played live for... Overkill, he's played live for so many fucking awesome fucking people. Um, he is also part of the Carrie King band now. He is now the lead guitarist for the Carrie King band. As we are talking about, this is the reason why we're doing this show is because they're ramping up the the album release, which is later this month. So totally cool shit. And uh, such a rad dude, you know. It's been a minute since we actually got to talk on there because like I said I had like an influx of of interviews all at one time and it's like you almost can't say no because it's like holy shit holy shit holy shit yeah these are all fucking top quality fucking uh, interviews as well you know so I want to go ahead and tell off some weeks coming up if that's really cool Uh, So, obviously, Phil Demmel is today. We've got a reforged edition for Volcondra coming up uh, next week. Uh, Leatherlung, who recently just put out an album. uh, They're in there. Assimilator, Wizard Death. And then we, at the end of the month, we have 90 Minutes with Jarvis Leatherby, which I am... I want to release it, like, as soon as I can, but I've tried to not watch the video yet because I know it will... 90 Minutes wasn't enough. I know it yeah. really wasn't. And I think there's one question in there that I still am like, I want to go back and rewatch over and over and over again. Yeah. And yeah, he, I, I got some, uh, I got some, I don't remember if it was on the video or after the video recorded, but then we had some questions about some stuff and I got some of those answered. Sure. It was cool. Follow, follow yeah, yeah. On the extended edition of that on the Patreon exclusive flamekeeper.vip there's going to be some after questions that we talk because we talked for probably about another 20 minutes, but the actual show is going to be 90 minutes with Jarvis. Right. And yeah, there was some of those that I know you got, you got answered at the Asheville show is very candid. 
And that one question, that first, that first derailed question, it, I think we all three, it's like I, I had to do it. And I think we were all three just kind of like looking like, is this cool? <laughs> but you have to watch. That was now. So I, was, um, I guess I was looking forward to seeing that too. <laughs> uh, J to J. We'll just say that. Okay. Um, but yeah, you have to watch to find out what it is. And it's so fucking awesome. Dude, so you're you're very well versed in a lot of different music. You, you like the Doom. You like Thrash. You like Trad. Uh, now you've got me calling it trad because uh, I used to be. That's cool, man. That's cool. I like it. Uh, I I was the NWOTHM guy. It could be uh, track can be uh, post NWOTMH or whatever the acronym is. Um, if you really want to add a new um, subgenre, which seems to be a new one every day. What would be tradcore? Like do what? Tradcore. Trad. No, not really core. I would say post trad. Let's just. Start using post trad just because why the fuck not? No, let's not, dude. <laughs> I, I'm I'm like with Chuck on PT. that. PT, yeah. PT, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm like with chat, uh, or Chad shit. Um, uh, Chuck. Why did I say Chad? I don't know. Maybe because I know Chad. Uh, yeah, maybe I was thinking of uh, <laughs> Chad uh, Barnwell, not Barnhill, yeah. like I said in the Metallica good job, video. Good job, yeah. I, that I had to fix with the car crash. Um, but no, I'm with Chuck on that, where it's just like, heavy's fucking heavy, no matter what it is. Come on. I mean, why fucking genre subgenre? I get the fucking fact of things like Haunt is not the same as fucking Black Tusk, you know? <laughs> but they're still fucking heavy in their own regard, so it's metal. We're going to have we're gonna have an ale horn on this soon. I'm going to get you, and we'll find somebody else. I'm actually pro Category. Now, I'll tell you why. Real quick. Category, yes. But over, like, subgenre, subgenre, like, some yeah. of this shit that you get, like Swamp mm-hmm. Doom, fucking Swamp Stoner mm-hmm. Doom, that doesn't yeah. really need to be that. If it yeah, falls, I mean, well, it does. Because, real quick, and we'll, we'll move on. If you're shopping for, let's say, cookies, per se, you go and you see the uh, Pepperidge Farm, see the Oreos and you see Pepperidge the Farm remembers. Hoy. Wait, and you see the Chips Hoy and you see the Keebler stuff. Okay? You, hey, it's like, this is a good section to look for cookies in, okay? So you shop it through and then you see vegan cookies or like made with Splenda or like fucking Yeah, like sugar free. Me personally, I hate raisins. So you see something with raisins in it. Music to me is like the same way. I'm looking for something heavy list too. I'm in this kind of mood. If I see vegan metal, I'm fucking out. I'm not even looking at the shit. I'm going back over here where I'm comfortable. Is and vegan metal a that's thing? All, that's all I'm saying about stuff, guys. Is that even a thing? Vegan metal? I made it up to compare it to the cookies. I mean, I'm sure. You know what? I'm but it see. probably it probably is. I would say Gojira might be borderline vegan metal. I am going to. We're going to get a live one on this. <laughs> We're going to get oh, got a live. One I am a I am a good Europe fan. Vegan metal bands. What? Is it, it's a real category. Egglewilt, Wisent, Human Serpent, pro, probably non-vegan but pro-vegan band. Yeah. Uh, Balderas again, probably non-vegan but pro-vegan band. Uh, Belgost. Yeah, uh, no. Th- yeah, there's some actual fucking. They're all black metal bands, but yeah, I mean, there is the black metal chef on a- black and crust, death grind, <laughs> death grind, death core, gore grind, brutal death metal, slaughter box is a vegan band. Oh yeah, <laughs> Playing those, shredding those fucking carrots. Uh, uh, death metal, uh, gore gas. Maybe these are, maybe these are not necessarily uh, actual like vegan themed bands, but bands who are vegan. Hey, I'll be honest with you. There's a lot of, I meet a lot of musicians who are actually vegan. It's probably it's probably easier to be vegan on the road, so you don't eat like something kind of gnarly from a gas station or something. You're kind of like 
you're kind of not you know how your body can react to it where you know a lot of processed food it's different and bad yeah times. this is a uh, yeah this is totally a uh, this is totally a list of people who are vegan my bad yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. because they list Lena scissor hands on here yeah and she's in infected rain and not the band gotcha oh my well, bad reason, uh, you did ask me if I had a uh, topic for the uh yeah, actually. Oh, and so I yeah, do I, have one more I as well. Do, I actually do today. Um, so this is going to get into the debate of um, AI music, kind of. But I'm going to save that for my response. So I did the I did what I didn't want to do because I've heard so many people talking about it. And I listened to the new Motley Crue song. I haven't listened to it. Okay, it was produced by Bob Rock. Of course. So Bob's like, back okay, in the I'll game, go, baby. Yeah, I'll... I'll take a listen to it. So, yeah. So, Vince's vocals, yeah, totally fucking studio magic. Um, he doesn't sing much, and it's all, like, one-syllable words. So, it's kind of right in his wheelhouse. Anyway, the music fucking sucked. There was nothing interesting about it. But the only thing I, the only thing is, I've seen now, it seems to be a new thing, people. If people don't like it or they think it sucks, now they're labeling it AI without even knowing. Now, I don't think Bob Rock would do an AI track per se because I think he's just kind of old school that way sure um, so let's just stop labeling shit that you don't like AI because I mean honestly it's la- it's lazy I mean yeah the song sucks there was nothing redeeming in it for me I think John Five is an awesome guitar player this shit was like just not anything special even the solo was pretty pretty subpar um, so yeah let's just let's just quit calling shit that you don't like AI just to make it demean it more it's just a song that sucked that's all there was too Right, uh, and you're talking about Dogs of War, right? Whatever the fucking name is, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, I gotta look at the. the okay, video, so the video, no, the picture no, looks the like video it might is. Be. I don't know, but the video, the, the from the picture that I see on the fucking on the uh, dirt site, the fucking TMZ metal sites. Um, yeah, Ugh. they had to release this on my birthday too, didn't they? Well, my birthday. Month. But yeah, fuck yeah. Of all other fucking things that happen. <laughs> um, that had to happen too, huh? All right, so Bob Rock produced. This is uh, first thing with them, I believe, since Dr. Feelgood. It looks like I could be wrong with that. Um, Neil describes Dogs of War as an old school meets new school. It's got that old school vibe, but it's got new music. Nikki came up with it, and he sent me the music, and I thought it was really cool, so I started si- singing it. Yeah, sure. Uh, we got in the studio and turned into a song. I think fans are really going to like it. Mm, okay. I mean, yeah, I'm like... Yeah, what's that? Dude, what can I say? People pay to see him. I mean, even though... That stadium tour, to act like it was all to the Motley Crew. It was all because of Def Leppard. Let's just be honest. If Dude, Def Leppard wasn't on that, there wouldn't be a fucking stadium tour. Oh hell no, no. hell no. Yeah. I mean, and like the it might be the same set for Motley Crew. I don't know. I think Def Leppard would probably do a stadium tour on their own without Def Leppard, without Motley Crew. But well, it all comes down to, to that. Even with them, it still comes down to the same thing that we bitch about, like with Metallica. You know, about on that's on the live ship setting of it. But I'm gonna listen to this even knowing it's I'm not a Motley Crue fan. I've been outspoken about that, about uh, I mean, there's stuff that I can respect that they've done, like first few albums I really like. First two albums. First two albums are solid. Yeah, the I first two, two are. Today, but, and yeah, I'm not gonna that. fucking be the guy that sits there and knocks Doctor Feel Good because it does have good songs on it. It's just, you know, it's Bob Rock. I mean, I mean it's let's, put what? It this way. let's put it this way about Motley Crue, okay? On the uh, on the thumbnail on Netflix about the Dirt movie, they don't even show Motley Crue. It's the guy who plays Ozzy. Yeah. Motley Crue is a self-manufactured, dangerous, or notorious band. They're fucking lightweight, dude. They don't do anything. They're all a bunch of fucking corporate fucking shills. That's all they were. That's all they were after, after Shout the Devil. That's all they turned into. There was nothing dangerous about them. Everything was fucking made up. Sure. It's, it's, it's the honest truth. Like, like I said, the dirt was like it fucking sucked. I watched it. It was, it was fucking lame. Not seeing yeah, that. It was all it. it was all like self serving. Like oh yeah, look how crazy we were. I was like no, dude, this is made up. And, and the only the statement that all I needed was that Nikki Six said was oh well we came out of retirement because people thought we were cool and that never seen us before after they saw the movie. 
Like, dude, that movie was fucking sea level at best. Nobody fucking thought you guys were cool after the movie. I'm not going to say that they funny didn't funny didn't pool because either. I know, I definitely know, like, uh, one of my nephews totally got into Motley Crue based on the dirt. Really? That movie was fucking lame. Really? Yeah, see, and, and like I said, when it comes to, like, uh, dramatizations of things like biopics or whatever you want to yeah. say, um, that's where I kind of like draw the line. I really don't watch a lot of them. I, I do documentaries more than anything. Yeah. I mean, I don't even necessarily like fucking uh, the films like on that are not even biopics, but they're fiction. You know, mm-hmm. like I'm not a big fan of like Metal Lords or um, what's the other one? Uh, there's another one that's out that's like that, like Metal Lords, uh, Deathgasm, mm-hmm. maybe. Uh, Hesher is one that's kind of metal influenced like that uh, with Joseph Gordon-Levitt and uh, Natalie Portman I think it's Natalie Portman I I didn't watch it I I haven't either I've only seen clips of it Uh, but anyways no so last Friday on the birthday uh, promoted uh, Tombstoner Flesher and Sinistrum at the Mag Bar. Totally rad fucking show. Awesome fucking death metal. Uh, the uniting of three fucking death metal uh, state bands and shit like that from Kentucky, Indiana, and New York. Totally fucking rad time. Everybody's fucking awesome. Played well. Fucking shout out to fucking Scott from Sinistrum for fucking real because their drummer Craig couldn't make the show, so he fucking stepped in. And he's their vocalist. And he stepped in and did vocals and drums. Damn, that's pretty good. Yeah, and you can yeah. see there is a reel on the uh, on the uh, Instagram and Facebook pages, so you can totally check that shit out and uh, you know do that shit, you know, because that's totally fucking cool. Um, so yeah, uh, looking forward to uh, other shows. Like I said, this week um, we're at fucking uh, Ice Howl is playing Legions of Metal. It just was announced earlier this week that uh, Ice Howl is also playing next month with Tribunal at Black Circle Brewing in Indianapolis. And then we have a show with uh, Wolf Tooth in Bloomington at the Bishop. And then uh, Overload has a show with Haunt and Savage Master and Blind Scryer coming up in August. So fuck, it's busy already. All of a sudden, yeah, fucking lots busy, of shows. Yeah. Be September before you know it. All this shit would have happened already. Yeah, I know. And, you know, we're only a fucking few months away. And, uh, obviously, big goddamn metal show's coming up. Uh, that's gonna be fucking rad as shit. Um, Jason, do you have anything else before we jump into, uh, Phil Dimmel today? No, no. Pretty, pretty quiet over here. Not, not too much going on. Gonna go with the, uh, the old school today, you know? We are. We're going to go with old school today because we're going to play something from Eternal Nightmare, from Violence, going all the way back to June of 1988. Holy shit. Fucking, what is that, 36 years ago. Fucking. Long time, yeah. 36 fucking years. I mean, I was eight, so. I know, right? So we're going to go with (laughs) Kill on Command. Yeah.
right, metalheads. We are being joined this week with the man, the myth, the legend. He uh, is an amazing fucking guitar player. You might have known him from bands such as Violence or maybe Machine Head. Uh, if you are, you know, really, really into the know, you might know who BPMD is. <laughs> if you really know, because that's a kind of a new oh, venture. Yeah. You've only got one album out with him. But okay, his right. most recent edition is with the new Carrie King solo album. We are talking with Mr. Phil fucking Demol. Demolition man, Phil fucking Demol. Dude, how are you doing, man? I'm good, man. You know, it's it's six o'clock, so this is like I've got three kids here and it's this is about the time when I start hitting the wall and they start we call it the wolfing hour. We have a seven year old, his name is Wolf, and this is when he starts to go, oh, Gets a little crazy, and Magnus is a two-year-old. He'll probably come in here at some point. So um, that's when they start to ramp up. So it's just weird. I'm coming down. They're going up. <laughs> they yeah, have to get gotta gather it all up and get it together. So how is it being? You know, uh, in your you're in your mid fifties and being a dad, like the the little little kids at that old. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be an experience. It's a lot, man. It is a lot. You know, when we, uh, our seven year old, uh, my wife, Marta, um, she plays in the band bleeding through. Um, I have a a son from a previous and, uh, a daughter from way back. That's a whole different story. I'll have to read the book for that story. Right. Um, but her and I, um, have a seven year old who was, uh, who was IVF. So, um, I was, I had a vasectomy. I was told I couldn't have kids. And, uh, so we did IVF and he was our, he was our, he was our kid. You know, we're planning on having more children in the future, but you know, we had embryos saved and um, I'm probably getting way in depth right now, but, (laughs) but so, uh, the quarantine happens and, um, you know, after five, six years of thinking that I'm playing on house money and just banging, you know, just letting it go, you know. It's it. Matt, little Magnus came along, little miracle baby. So, oh wow, um, yep. Yeah. So uh, two and a half. I'm about to be fifty-seven, and uh, still changing diapers, man. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a lot. It is a lot. And luckily, my wife's uh, she's a lot younger and um, handles the bulk of of uh, that type of stuff you know but it's even even still it's uh these these kids are a lot and uh they demand a lot so for sure um, and a lot of not a lot of time for other stuff but we always find find time to mix in some things yeah always find time for metal because fuck metal is life right and it is and so that's the other thing too is as you've gotten older slowing down a little bit Do you feel like you are? I mean, because uh, by the time we're doing this interview versus the time that this aired, so it might be kind of old news, you were stepping back from violence this past weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, uh, you know, you define slowing down. I think that my body is slowing down. My metabolism is slowing down. My... uh, um, I, I've never been busier music wise, you know, I've got, um, the, the carry records coming out in June, no, in May, uh, I've got a record with category seven coming out in June. I've got, um, there's possibly another BPMD record in the works. Um, maybe, maybe not. Um, but you know, with all the fill-in stuff I was doing with Lamb of God and Testament and, um, you know, I, it's hard to, you know, with a band like violence, which has been, was my high school band back in 1985, you know, um, to see it, I got back together in 19. We did a five song EP, which I love doing. Um, Perry was involved with that. Christian, you know, was on board. Bobby was on board. Definitely. I I actually have it. I like the idea of that lineup 
working and being something, you know, I thought that, you know, Bobby, um, it was a hard, it was hard go with Bob just from the fact of where he was, he was located in Florida and getting together and, and making everything kind of work in that kind of a sense was a thing. And there's just been a rotation of other guitar players and I'm missing shows, you know, I made a decision about a year ago to kind of step back from what the what the band was. We did a show on Sunset, uh, first show after Perry left, and I and I got to the show and I got backstage and I you know it was fifty people backstage and I knew the guys in my band basically you know and that didn't feel like it didn't feel like violence you know it didn't feel like <laughs> the right. old feelings what I wanted to do that for and. To try to take that band with these rotating guitar spots and fill in guys and it was just not not what I wanted to do anymore, you know. And I love the music that we made and I love the EP that we made and as far as getting out and grinding it out and doing some of these shows wasn't something that I was really really interested in anymore. And it I kinda came to a head on this last South American run and um, just some shit went down and I don't want to get into, but sure. it was, it was enough to just go to just say, Hey, I need to. And it was the day after, you know, the carry announcement came too. So they're in no ways tied together. You know, <laughs> my leaving violence, you know, wasn't because this is starting and this isn't, it was, it was just, it was just well, time for me to sever ties. And, you know, it's, Violence was my fuck buddy, you know, and it was just that I didn't want to. I I needed to cut it off. You know, I needed no more, no, no more booty calls. It, it was it was oh, not being as fun, fun anymore. I get it. Yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. when the fun's kind of gone, you need to you need to step back. And yeah. and you know, back in the day, I would have totally. Uh, totally been that like that dude in this soon been like oh fuck those two announcements came together something's gotta be fucking up. I, you know I, back in the dirt sheet day right in the zine days yeah. and shit but like today nah it's like fuck you know anybody could play for any fucking body anymore <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure and that's and that's the thing it, it did I have enough closure with the band I feel 100% fulfilled in what I've, I've done with my part with it. It's time for Sean to Sean's at a point in his life where he wants to go out and, and, you know, go see the world and, and do these things. And I'm just, we're just in two different spots. And, right. you know, I asked him to, to shut it down a year ago and he didn't, you know, at first he was like, and, and, you know, just call it Killian's violence or Killian on command or something like that. And, um, he thought about it and then he just kind of, you know, he kind of reneged on it with the fight. Like, no, I want to keep going and I want to use the name and I can't, you know, that's as far as I took it. I asked him, he didn't want to. And it's, I'll, I'll, for sure. I'm, I'm not know if I'm, I would call it, I'm supporting it, but I'm not standing in the way of it <laughs> either. Yeah. So, no, that, that yeah. makes, that's we're, totally respectable. You know, we're still business partners. Yeah. Um, in that sense, as, but like the the touring and the working that they're all doing, um, I won't I won't have any part of that or the merch that they're doing or anything like that. I'll step away. But just as far as the past records and as far as the name concerned, I still have my my interest in that. For sure, absolutely. So with the with the new uh, Carrie King album coming out in May, uh, what what are we looking forward to? Are you obligated to talk? Are we looking at tours or anything? Um, I'll, I can talk about what's been announced and as much as I know, which isn't, you know, a whole lot, I get kind of spoon fed information as it comes down and that's understandable. It's been, this thing has been, you know, kind of hush for, you know, four plus years now. And, um, I'm, I'm, uh, given information on a need to know basis and I'm totally fine with that. That's what I signed up with, signed up for. This is, this is Carrie's venture. This is Carrie's band. Uh, and I play lead guitar for, for Carrie. And uh, so the record comes out in May, um, like 12 songs on it. Most of this, almost all the songs is, are pretty new. I think that there was like a holdover track, one or two from uh, a repent, repentless session that he had. Um, 
but uh, songs are strong. I think people would be uh, not shocked, but kind of like everybody's on this whole. Uh, Jeff wrote all the good songs. Scary songs suck. You know, kind of. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that, and and you know, and I think a lot of people discredit Carrie, um, and it's and it and it does suck. But like when it when it's something new that you that you're a part of, how does that how does that affect you? Well, it doesn't affect me at all. I mean, I didn't write any of the material. Uh, um, I've, I, of course, wanted to be a, a accepted well. I like it, and I, you know, Carrie's my friend. I want him to, his creation to be, you know, uh, met with agreeing terms or people that like it and people that will give it a chance instead of, you know, like I said, you know, I'll Jeff, all the Jeff wrote all the good songs. Well, if you take away the songs that Kerry wrote too, and you have, you know, half a record or whatever, and they're not all filler songs that he wrote either. So right. Kerry is more capable of writing iconic riffs. I played you some of the riffs he wrote. You go, Oh my God. You know? So I think that this record is going to wake people up to that fact that, um, the Kerry is, he's been the guy, the, that's been, you know, making that band happen for the past, shit, I don't know, 20 years or however long. And I, I equate it to not really on the same level, but there was a point when Gene Simmons was getting away from Kiss and acting and doing all this other shit. And meanwhile, Paul is still back there all waving the flag, right. doing, you know, doing all the work. And, you know, Kerry did a lot of work for that band. He played all the bass on the records and towards the end, I think he wrote most of the lyrics. And uh, he, on the demos, that I heard he's singing and it sounds like Slayer you know it sounds like I mean Carrie was was Slayer towards the end there so um, well and that's the thing too is you know when it's when it turns into um, I don't know your quote air quotes here for the audio listeners you know your project at that time that when you invest so much of yourself into it yeah I mean it's gonna it's gonna have that I think Absolutely. And the risks are different. I mean, I don't want to give too much away about the record, but I mean, it's a thrash record, but it's not just blazing fast. You know, there's, there's slow parts and grinding parts and crunchy parts. And Mark sings his ass off on this thing, man. Mark sounds so fucking good. And Paul, the Josh Wilbur doing the record Paul's parts are you hearing everything that he does and he does these incredible, you know, fills and double bass parts and, you know, the riffs are awesome. And I think that, um, I told Carrie this afterwards, like, is like, dude, this is, these are my favorite leads of his. Like he spent some time on his solos and, you know, they're, they're really good. And like, I said, what happened? And he's all, well, I, I had time to work on them. You know, he's all, I'm usually in the studio writing lyrics and I'm usually, the solos are the last thing that I do when I get in the studio. So it's like, I had time to kind of, you know, and and he had my solos for a bit too. There was some that he did first and then there was some that I did first. And I think that I bring this, a, a different melodic sense to the solos than Jeff or Gary for that matter, to his music you know, and it, um, and I think that he, it might have opened him up in this direction, maybe a little bit, maybe not, you know, it's, he's pretty set in what he does, but I think that, you know, the two of us together play off, play off well, you know, there's a couple of times when we go back to back and, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. I think people are going to dig it. For sure. I, I really hope so because, you know, a lot of people, Back in in the day, you know, we're talking a lot of shit on the last few Slayer albums as well. But then again, you know, it it's it's art. It's subjective. People are going to have their opinions. And but I really hope that this is that album, you know, that return album for Carrie. I really do. Yeah. And I mean, you know, it's, with, it's not a Slayer record. It's not a Slayer record. It's, it, it might be what they were doing next, but I don't know if he's you know when he's he was looking for a singer for a minute too so he's writing these so- tunes without a singer in mind you know maybe he was going to sing on it too you know uh, it's all these different things so it's 
you know, I, I think that there's enough attention to, hey, this is a new thing, so there more people will give it a chance than maybe another Slayer record. Um, but we'll find out. It's it's a new thing, you know. Kyle on Kyle on bass, and you know that he's got a different band. So I think people will be you know interested in in hearing that. The first song popped up. Yeah, and that's the that's the cool thing is like here you've played with slayer you've played with testament violence uh so many other uh awesome thrash musicians oh my God. overkill overkill you know fucking oh God. i mean you, fucking so many different fucking bands over the years i mean you're kind of the go-to guy it's like it, it sounds like you are it's like hey fuck can Phil fill in for us this time? I mean, it, 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 that's got to be fucking an awesome thing. It's like to be able to be such a versatile player yourself, to be able to play with different thrash bands who you have unique styles of thrash themselves. Yeah. I mean, I've, there was a period, I think it was 2021 where everything was opening back up. Uh, Lama got it reached out to have me in their bullpen. They were going on the first leg with Megadeth, so I, I learned their stuff. Uh, Violence was playing Bloodstock. I was supposed to play Bloodstock in 21. And uh, it. so Devin Townsend, me and him, had seen each other, and we had talked about me doing something with him. And so Devin was headlining Bloodstock that year. So I was, he recruited me to play guitar for him at a uh, headlining Bloodstock set. And uh, so I learned his stuff. So I've got the Lamb of God set. I've got the, the Devon set. Two totally different things, right? So there's a, a Metal Allegiance show that's happening in Long Island. So I'm rehearsing for that. That's another set of 20 songs. There's um, Testament <laughs> is slated to do this corporate gig that Alex isn't going to be able to make. It's a Monday night, Monday night football game. Yeah, I think it's a Monday night football game. The Raiders are playing the Ravens and the, and Vegas is having this corporate gig. So Testament sends me, Hey, we're up for this gig. We haven't got it, but you know, can you do it? So I'm learning, you know, so Lamb of God, Devin Townsend, Metal Allegiance, Testament, you know, all these things are, are lined up. There's a Merkins gig that I do with my cover band here. And we play 35 songs, you know? So I, there was a point <laughs> where there was a point where I had, and I want to say that another another uh, band, big band, had reached out to have me in their bullpen too. I, I had on my wall here. I had 176 songs or something ridiculous of all these different sets. That Jesus, you know, ready, ready to go. You know, and I think that there are people that I'm. You know, I think that people enjoy having me there i'm not the most capable dude to do this there's other guitar players that are capable of doing these things but i think that i check you know a bunch of those boxes where i feel like i'm easy to get along with i feel like i'm not i'm super low maintenance on the road i don't ask for a lot um so that's where where all that comes in and i can retain some material i can learn some stuff pretty quick so i'm not the only guy but i'm, I'm really thankful that coming from a where I was in late 2018 of, you know, not feeling that I was even worthy of being or being told that I wasn't worthy of being in a pro level band and saying that all these things were going to happen to me when I quit machine head and going to lose a lot of friends and shit. And, you know, I'm at this point to where, you know, holy fuck you know it couldn't be more untrue that you know people want me in these high level bands and these these gigs and there's been so many of them and you know it, it it's real you know i don't know what the, the right word it's gratifying it's it's justifying it's um it makes me feel good and it makes me feel worthy so awesome, you know, thank you to all the bands that you know believed in me and brought me back from you know a pretty dark place for a minute fuck yeah dude and see that's what it's about so now there's two questions one is the phone rings or the email pops up or however it happens uh that uh for you 
It's the band that you absolutely cannot say no to. Who is it? Yeah. Who is it? Says I already F- happened. Phil, we need <laughs> we need it. We need somebody to come fill in. Uh so and so can't play uh these three or four oh, shows. Man. Who would it be? Yeah. Oh man, there's it, it's anybody in a sense if they're especially my friends that that call up. The overkill thing was one thing that I was kind of hesitant to do just because of the Bobby Gustafson connection, you know, Bobby's in violence at the time. And, um, and it was just, you know, a perception thing. It's just like, well, they called the wrong, you know, overkill and, and Bobby had their thing. And, you know, I, I talked to Bobby about it. There was a little bit of miscommunication about it, but, you know, um, I felt like it was okay to do, um, and what band? I mean, who would I turn down? I mean, there's not a lot that I turn down, dude. You know, and I don't want to make it sound like I'm gunning for anybody's position here either. Like, <laughs> right. So, you know. so okay, we could say Kirk. If Kirk couldn't make it, you would take Kirk's place. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. But am I the guy that they would call? I, I mean, you, you know, never know. Um, you never know. Yeah. Of, of course. What, what happens? Know, gig, I, you could you be know? in the same city. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. I mean, shit. Ha- weirder things have fucking happened in metal. <laughs> things, things have happened for sure. But I mean, there are gigs that I can't do. There's gigs that you know that I when when uh, um, yeah, Kiko was when Kiko was gone and everybody's like, oh, there, here's a spot for demo or blah blah blah. And it's like, <laughs> No way. You know, and it's not a Mustang thing at all, because I get along great with Dave and you know, I him and I have got a, a cool mutual respect thing and he's always treated me really well and I just don't I'm just not capable of doing that gig. You know, there's just solos that I just physically could not pull off under all those judging eyes. You know, the Pantera thing's another thing where my name was popping up just as people, you know, just oh hey, blah blah blah. Um that's, I I couldn't do that gig. There's no way that I would do that gig. You know, they got the right guy for that gig. I can't, you know, too many judging eyes. And there is and a many... lot of judging eyes on that still, still to this yeah, day. It's is, been two I mean, years. It is, and it doesn't matter who it was going to be, you know, but in my eyes, and that's all I can only speak for myself, I sure. I am 100% accepting of of that and that. So I haven't seen it. You know, I'm hoping that it's a big celebration and a tribute to the bro to the brothers, and I hope well, that it is in that sense. I but think that people I, have their opinions because they don't know the in, any inside. They're not in the inside circle. Yeah, I mean, they're do they do this for their reasons. You do things for your reasons. I, as an artist, do things for my reasons with my band. Sure. So, sure, yeah, I mean. It's their reason, and you know, that's what you got to respect, I guess. Yeah, they're you know playing arenas, and you can't, you know. And my, you know, I get asked who do I think could play this stuff, and there's there's three guys that I think would absolutely nail it playing it, and that's you know Ola, and it's Wes Hauk, and it's Reese Struggs, who's now playing playing Machine Head, but he's from Habit. And those three guys, they can play it, but does an arena full of Pantera fans want to watch that person play that though? Right. You know, or do the they want to see of Zach. Yeah. The, you know, our reigning four of you know fucking guitar, which is Zach Wild, our you know our torchbearer for this generation. And in my eyes, you know, that that's, that's what I want to see. Well, and, you know, and again, you know, Zach has a look, Zach, is, you know, when you see Zach, you know, it's Zach. It's the fucking, yes. I mean, they put his silhouette on the fucking guitar because you knew who the fuck it was. Yes. You Absolutely. know, just, Absolutely. I mean, just for that alone is price of admission, right? Yep. I but, agree. I mean, so, it, He's catching some stuff or, oh, he's not meeting this the way this is. And he's not doing, it's like, man, give a dude a break. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's like, enjoy, enjoy the tribute, enjoy the celebration. Nobody's playing, you know, Phil isn't singing like he was back in the day. 
You know, Rex isn't playing like he was back in the day, but this is who we are now at 60, 60 years old and enjoy this celebration and be part of it, man. Exactly. And to me, I really fucking enjoy as well, you know, the other aspect where they're taking out uh, bands from Phil's label, from Housecore, where mm-hmm. Snafu and Childbite and all these other bands have been playing on the tours with them. And I think that's right. fucking awesome because I think there's a huge gap between these higher, bigger ended club gigs. Uh, you know, it's the clubs that everybody plays, like Reggie's in Chicago and, mm-hmm. and places like that. And then to the small theater gig, like the 2,500 seat. There's that break in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you get bands like Pantera and Lamb of God bringing their label mate or parent label bands out, that is, that's awesome because that elevates them to where they could get into those smaller, smaller places. Right. Those yeah, it's, bigger places it's, it's for amazing. them, you know, where they, I read a, a thing where there was a band, it was Snafu, that had um, had uh, played to like 40 people in a fucking garage two nights before playing uh, Noblesville uh, Amphitheater in Indiana for 22,000 people. Oh, right on. <laughs> and it's just like, and they've been a band fucking forever, too. And it's like, right fuck on. yeah, man. I dig that shit. Uh, so you know, close to close to fifty years in the in the in the metal game in the business of you know playing music and shit like that and the the artistry behind it. What keeps you going? I think that you know every every new opportunity kind of kind of keeps me going in that sense. I mean, I did a bunch of these collab jams during the quarantine. And that was just, you know, recording all these cool cover songs that I that I enjoyed over the years and, and reaching out and playing with all these amazing musicians remotely and doing these videos and recording. I started recording at home a lot more during those. Um, I think that this uh, Category 7 record that's coming out in June uh, that I did with John Bush and... Um, and Mike Orlando and Jason Pittner and Jack Gibson is you know, this incredible creative outlet in that sense. And, you know, the carry, the carry thing is, is we're going to be playing amphitheaters and we're going to be playing, you know, all these places doing these Euro festivals and American festivals that I hadn't played in 10 years, you know, um, machine had stopped playing festivals for a bunch of reasons. And, um, so I hadn't played festivals in five years, you know, and, uh, you know, just the music, I th- still feel like I have something to offer in a creative sense, in a live sense. Um, all these different weird offers, they come, you know, you've seen them and you haven't seen some of them. Some of them didn't come to fruition, but there are just these other incredible things that are, I keep using the word, you know, career affirming, life affirming that, you know, <laughs> it's just oh, these guys like me, or, you know, it's just like, am I worthy, worthy of this stuff? And, um, well, and I I've think got, you're, yeah, I get that. That's like, the, it, it is life affirming. I, yeah. yeah. Dude, that's actually, that's, a, dude, that's a beautiful thing. Honestly. I got a, a, you know, an amazing wife who is, she's been through the, you know, the industry, she knows it. So she understands the deal and uh, she's still active. She goes out and does stuff too. So it's, you know, we own a business at home. We own a bar here in town. And uh, so we're fortunate to be able to do all these things. And Do you book live bands? <laughs> no, we don't. You know, it's, it's, it's a small place. It's only like 80 capacity. But my, uh, my cover band will play there. And we'll just <laughs> get the pool tables out and pack it out and have everybody singing, you know. Uh, one hit dead or you know it happened that's it's live karaoke basically and <laughs> but we'd get some we get some of the local legends to come out we had uh, like Brad Gillis came out and jammed with us the last time and hell yeah uh, Captain Novo from Journey came down and jammed with us and 
some of the Tesla dudes happen and Chuck and uh, Eric from Testament came down and played and Wayne from Habry. And so, and it's just all silly cover tunes and, you know, it's Fuck yeah, a dude. Dude journey and, it, you know, it's fun. It sounds rad as shit. If, if I'm in the, uh, in the area, I'll definitely Absolutely, hit dude. it up. It's super fun. Dude. We do it twice a year. Fuck yeah. So I'm going to ask you some uh, general profile questions about Phil Demo here. Right. These are these are brought up from in, from out of uh, the de- random deck of cards. All right. If you could level up an aspect of yourself, strength, intelligence, charisma, whatever, uh, what would you want to do? Is it one of those three, or can I come up with yeah, something whatever. else? Yeah, whatever. If if it's an aspect of yourself, what would you want to level I, up? I, you know, I really need to work on my uh, letting it go aspect of myself. Ooh. I have a, a very strong sense of of uh, like vigilante justice. Like if I see somebody cut off somebody in traffic, I want you know. It's I. It just I need to just. And a lot of things that have happened to me with with people and shit. I just need to, I need to learn to let shit go. I feel that. I totally <laughs> feel that. Uh, I have the problem where I, uh, when people like are bitching at a situation, I feel like they're bitching at me, mm-hmm. and I wear that shit, and I'm just like, fuck. Ah, so if I see something, you know something wrong that happened i just have this strong sense of you know curing injustice and making shit right <laughs> for sure and uh and i just need to i need to let go of i need to let go of some shit so we'll leave it at that absolutely dude i totally get that uh what is a quote that inspires you and why um There was a quote that my dad had on his desk at work. It was from Eleanor Roosevelt, and it and it's no one can make you feel inferior without you giving your consent. So basically, nobody can make you feel like shit unless you let them. So their words are nothing unless you give them the energy to be something. Boom! Wow, and Eleanor Roosevelt, man, she's got a bunch of winners. Fuck, Heart lady. Yeah, dude. That is awesome. That's a good one, right? That is. That is fucking wow. That should have been the last question. (laughs) Uh, What is one thing that does not add value to your life, but you still do it? Uh, That's one thing that doesn't add value to, you know, probably... What... Probably drinking Coca Cola, drinking soda. <laughs> that's, not, that's not adding any value, but I still do it. There you go, drinking soda. For sure, <laughs> I totally get that. Um, all right, I, <laughs> I'm going to ask you a Beatles question. Are you a Beatles fan? Nope, not at all. <laughs> nope. <laughs> that means a <laughs> couple songs. Go ahead, ask it anyways. Let's see what you got. Uh, who looks uh which which version of John looks cooler? Mustache and bearded John or clean shaven? I like the clean shaven the the fifties the fifties version. Like the doo op like the doo op Beatles. Yeah, I love doo op man, and that's my favorite Beatles. Yeah, that's uh, something era. I was gonna ask. I know they weren't a band for even even that long, but you like, know, that was I, I love the doo op and I love the early stuff. Right. Hell yeah. I, I Yeah, I dig like, uh, I think my favorite song of theirs is Help. Uh, side note tangent here, a little bit of an extra question. Uh, aside from anything metal or hard rock related or any of that, uh, what's a go-to song that, that you go to to clear your head? Ooh, not that's hard not, rock related? That's not metal or anything like that. Like... There's a um, Elton John song. I don't know if he wrote it. I think he did. I think that Bernie Toppin wrote it. That's called the Border Song. 
Uh, sure. Oh, dear Moses, I have been deceived. You know, so probably the border song by, by Elton John. Fuck yeah. Dude, that's awesome. Hell yeah. Uh, Phil, I have one last fucking question. But before we get to it, uh, as always, links are listed below. So give likes, shares, follows. If you don't already, you should. Uh, if you don't already, where the fuck have you been? Uh, <laughs> um, do you have any shout outs or uh, anything else you want to promote today? Oh, you know, what is today? What is happening? No, you know, the carry records out in uh, May, I think the 17th. 15th or 17th right around there and um we have some shows coming up there's a tour happening with lamb of god and mastodon and Kerry king man and i think malevolence is opening in the states so hitting a bunch of the it gets kind of a sea market tour um but playing a bunch of sheds and so looking forward to that tour doing uh, welcome to rockville and we're doing uh, sonic temple in columbus ohio too so those will be the first two shows we do in the middle of may so pick up that pick up the Carrie King release coming out in May. Hell yeah, man. Absolutely. Uh so final question of the day is Do you know the meaning of life? <laughs> no, I don't know the meaning of life. I know I mean my creed, if you will is you know politics and religion and everything else aside just be good to each other man be fucking good to each other and and be honest you know let there be good intentions there you go fuck yeah dude absolutely i couldn't agree more you know uh aside from all the fucking man-made construct garbage shit that's fucking there, you know, whatever fucking side of the aisle you're on, whatever side of the, uh, the, uh, yeah. stratosphere you, you believe in. You wouldn't know. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, just be fucking cool with each other. Fucking don't fucking be dick fucking, you know, Hey, we're all playing the same fucking song. We're all fucking fighting the same fucking fight. We all fucking have the same bullshit happen. Be empathetic, be understanding, be good. Fuck yeah, brother. On our way out today from your musical career, uh, any any of uh, any song from your bands, what do you want to play out? Yeah. What do I want to play out? Anything. Um, shit. Do you have the Technocracy record? I bet you don't. <laughs> I don't actually. Yeah. I wow. That. See, that, that talk that about on, deep on. cuts. I'm talking about the the other stuff. Wow. I did. Yeah. I do see it. I do know it's listed, and I have heard of it, but I don't have it. All right. Well, check it out. Check out the Technocracy record. Uh, it's. I need to get that up on all the uh, the platforms. Do you got the Torque record? I don't have that either. <laughs> but. Uh, um. Yeah, I, I'll get you should it. Should be though. able to get that. You I'll get it. Get what? What do we? What do we want to play off of it? There's a uh, there's a song called "Circling the Drain" off the Torque the Torque re-release. So uh, get that mascot just re-released the Torque record. There's a song called "Circling the Drain." Hell yeah! You heard him. This is circling the drain. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. You bet, man. Yeah.
2017, one man's vision and passion for all things metal started out as a record store in his house. Years later, the fight against a mainstream empire continues as Shade Beast. An independent metal collective and online store based in Athens, Georgia, is the world's premier heavy metal brand for music heads that value authenticity over the mainstream acceptance. Featuring original t-shirts from some of the best underground artists, as well as stickers, posters from the Shade Beast Presents concert series. Unique, one-of-a-kind collectibles and small curated selection of vinyl and cassettes from the masters old and new. Visit ShadeBeast.com and enter promo code SITHLORD for free domestic shipping on your first order, whether you're a new customer or returning. And be sure to join the Shade Beast social groups on Facebook and the interwebs to keep up with the new release announcements and talk all things metal and Star Wars. You'll never find a more wretched hive of scum and filth. Welcome to the night. You think you know Night Demon? Then the Night Demon Heavy Metal Podcast is for you. Step into the darkness as we peel back the curtain to give you an unprecedented, all-access look into the mind and the heart of the demon. We're talking band history, song analysis, studio anecdotes, stories from the road. It's everything a diehard Night Demon fan could want and more. This is the only place to learn the inside scoop the deep dive trivia, the untold tales from the band members themselves and those closest to the Night Demon story. Need more? The sacred Night Demon crypt will be pried open to reveal demo recordings that have never before seen the light of day. All with in-depth commentary by the band and the people who were there for the writing and recording process. This is a gold mine, a treasure trove of all things Night Demon. Head over to nightdemon.net or wherever you listen to podcasts. (laughs) 
Since 2013, there has been a calling from the underground, from the graves of all those unholy, and they decided to make a zine to talk about all of this. Soul Grinder Zine, an independent metal zine to keep you informed on all things metal and horror from the underground. Available in both print and digital formats, they're bringing you the best interviews and reviews out there today. Not only do they do the zine, but they also do compilation CDs. Check them out at facebook.com slash soulgrinder.zine and start your subscription now. Hey everybody, let me tell you about the new sponsor to the Metal Forge, Unchained Tapes. They're an independent Pennsylvania tape label. They focus on extreme metal and punk with a killer approach to the tape scene. Visit their web store at unchainedtapes.bigcartel.com now to get your fill of tapes. And for being a Metal Forge listener, enter the code METALFORGE10 at checkout to get a 10% discount on your total purchase. That's unchainedtapes.com bigcartel.com What's up, Metal Forge fans? This is Alan Bishop, the alchemist of Indiana's Black Forest and head distiller at Spirits of French Lick. Do you find yourself drawn to the unexplained, fascinated by the Fortean, or enchanted by the paranormal? If the things that go bump in the night resonate in your mind, then tune into my brand new podcast. If you have ghosts, you have everything. Featuring first-hand accounts, collected stories, interviews, history, and speculation related to all things not of this world. Available now on Anchor, Spotify, Google, Amazon, and more. Set back, relax, and remember, if you have ghosts, you have everything. Hey, let me tell you guys about Mercenary Press. They're an independent London label and distributor of all things metal. Mercenary Press delivers the goods from their own independent zine. Trust me, you're going to want to get in on that. To distributing various bands from all over the world, including Cramp from Spain and Sadistic Force from Texas. Visit mercenarypress.bigcartel.com to find out what all they have in stock and what you can order. And for Metal Forge listeners, enter code METALFORGE10 to receive a discount on your total purchase at mercenarypress.bigcartel.com. Check it out now. Hey, Metalheads, it's with great pleasure I get to tell you guys about a new sponsor to the Metal Forge, Ageless Art, New Albany. After 20 years of owning and operating Ageless Art in Clarksville, Indiana, Phil Garrett had a vision for a new type of tattoo studio, something that is clean and modern, sleek, refined, inviting. And he's done just that with Ageless Art in New Albany. You can find it at... 2736 Charlestown Road, New Albany, Indiana, 47150. Business hours are Monday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Sundays are 12 to 6. All sessions are appointment only, so give them a call and go get you some new ink. Or if it's your first time, go get your first one, baby.